I'm going to put together a post on, on my site afterwards of links to stuff to talk about. Um, so that way you can easily grab it there. Um, I've been uh, working on PodCamp since uh, the early days. And uh, this is my first year not as an official organizer, so it's kind of new territory for me. Uh, so yeah, so anyways, welcome to uh, Podcasting 201. I kind of want to get a sense for where you guys are at because some of the stuff I'm going to talk about is going to slightly overlap with the 101 session, but we're going to get more into um, self-hosted uh, WordPress and other services that are paid and not just free quick, quick services and more, a little bit more technical than the first session. Um, but first things first, um, what, where are you guys at? Are, who's like just starting out, wants to start a show or start getting into this, but hasn't really it's just like trying to figure it out. Okay, so something. How many people already have a show and you're trying to learn a little bit more? Okay, cool. Uh, so it's about a little bit about half and half. So I mean, feel free to stop me as I go through and I'll answer any questions. And um, uh, um, so the best, the first thing for me about um, recording a podcast, whether you're doing audio or video, it's all about like the best quality audio you can get. Um, so you want to have a good microphone and a good good place to record uh, that's quiet. It doesn't have a lot of background noise. Um, if you're in your living room, when I started my first podcast, we had hardwood floors, big room, lots of echoes. I literally like flipped my laptop open and I just started talking at it, and that was how I got started with the first show I ever did. It was really crude, but you know I was just learning how to do how to do stuff. Uh, now I use this this microphone. Um, it's a Yeti mic. Um, Yeti is the brand name. Uh, Yeti Blue is the name of this microphone. Um, this is about like $150, $125 microphone. Um, but you don't need to, to like spend tons of money. You know, just you know, maybe step yourself up. I like this one because it's um, it can record different um, options for if you have more than one person, you can have set in the middle of the table if you have a group, or if you're just if you're just single talking right at it, it has some options for how this, the microphones are inside the, the cover here. Um, and it's a USB mic, so I can plug right into my laptop. Yeah. If you put that on your Amazon wish list, or you look at it on Amazon, mm -hmm. Amazon will let you know when the price comes down. Oh, cool. I've seen it as low as 100 bucks. Okay. Yeti makes other microphones that are less expensive. I know they got like a Snowball brand. It's like a little, little round thing. Um, even if you just get a simple microphone um, that's real cheap, uh, it can improve the quality of your of your recording. Um, and practice, just you know, um, you know, as what was saying, get to your ten episode mark. But practice just recording like yourself reading the news, or I'm gonna kind of put together a quick little episode here to show you some technical bits about the audio file. Um, just practice doing that and listen to you know how you're reading it and and that and, and how you're talking to the mic and your settings within your audio program. Just just do it a bunch of times and find find what you like and, and find what sounds good. Um, the more you do it, the better you will get. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I want to do first. Uh, oh, one, one quick thing. Uh, microphones, I'll put this up on the, um, on my blog. Um, so, Boss Job Studio, I'll, I'll mention them a little bit later. They're an app that allows you to record. They're specifically built for um, iOS devices to, like, it's a podcasting app. If you want to use an iPad to record your show or your phone, um, Boss Job Studio is uh, an, an, op an option to provide a $10 app. They have a free version, too, um, that's a little bit uh, watered-down version, but... Um, it's a cool app for, for recording on iOS device, which is great if you're if you want to do your show like out in the field and you don't have a studio or anything like that. Um, but their their post here is like a good list of microphones that you can use with your um, iOS device or you know, that sort of thing. So, anyways, um, so I mentioned that. So there's a lot of microphone options. You don't have to break the bank on it, but if you do need a bigger setup, um, pay attention to what Mike Sorg's going to do when they do record Awesome Cast Live because he's got a mixer. He's got multiple input channels. He's got lots of different microphones going on. And then his, the software that he's using to record all of that input is a lot more advanced. Um, so I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I've never done that kind of a show. So they said that I'm going to be the expert on that. But really, Mike, Mike is like the best person to talk to if that's the show you need to do. And if that's where you are, let's talk. Uh, uh, 
some stuff for you because for most for most podcasters, you're right here and you know it's just you and maybe one or two other people uh, all around a microphone. Um, so I thought what I'd do is um, read some of the uh, Twitter feeds, read some of the Twitter feeds that are coming in for podcast with the guy, just to do like a, show you like what the process is of like I'm just going to record a quick show and edit it together, upload it, and then push it live um, on my site. So um, I use GarageBand uh, to record, and uh, I know he showed you Audacity before. So it's a very simple interface, and um, it's it's pretty powerful in terms of like what you need to do editing um, your content. So I don't know, I'm just going to hit record here, and uh, Probably by trying to do this out. I'm just gonna skip this for now. Well, Mike let's just say I recorded a, you know, a bunch of awesome tweets for Podcast Pittsburgh, um, and uh, you know, I'm gonna add some music loops to this. I'm gonna do this to broadcast and use sound effects here. This might be a disaster. Uh, iTunes has a bunch of these like little audio clips. Um, them in TV commercials all the time if you're familiar with it. So, you know, you can build a show, you can, you can, you can add some sound effects to, to your episode and really kind of bring up the production quality very quickly. Um, and just by going through some of these and, uh, and experimenting with them. Yeah, so. I was going to have the sound and I was going to Amazing. But, um, okay, so let's say that's our show. I don't know if I don't know why this is so broken right now. And uh, once once we've edited our show and added our sound effects, um, what we want to do is save it as a, uh, an MP3 file. Now, you have some options in terms of saving your file. MP3 is a standard audio format. I mean, we'll mention that, and there are a lot of options for saving audio types. I would just start with MP3. It's gonna, the reason is it's gonna play on every device. Uh, it's gonna, uh, when your audio players on, that you're gonna use, it, it's, um, you're gonna be able to, it, it'll play on your website without a lot of issues. If you get into other file format types, the audio players get weird, and the devices, it gets more complicated. If you wanna Google that and learn more about the audio types of why those different, what the differences are, you should do that. But just to get started, save it as MP3. Um, if your audio podcast is just audio, uh, is just um, the human voice talking, it's not you're not playing instruments or anything like that. You, you don't need to have a super high quality audio file because you don't you're not having like all these channels. You're not mixing music together and and you'll need like sub level bass and you know high. Like you don't need that range. Of audio, so you don't need a huge file that has this huge range. It's just wasted data space, basically. So just save it as a low quality MP3, and low quality doesn't mean like bad quality. It just is the file size. It's going to compress it down, and you want to uh, you want the smallest file you can, so it loads quickly on the web and downloads fast. Um, An MP4 is like maybe around the corner. An MP4 can contain more data in the file, like pictures. You can break it up and like to have basically like track spaces, like if you want people to be able to click through like to different segments, like a fast forward button, um, or like hit the next track within your podcast file, 
that data and that stuff can be in an MP4, but again, the problem is, is not every audio player supports MP4, and it might not, it might have problems if someone downloads it and they're not using the latest iPhone or something. So, um, MP3 is the way you want to go. So, in GarageBand, they, um, if you go to share and you just want to export this song or disc, um, you have other options here that Apple kind of creates for you. You can explore with those, but for most of our purposes, we want to save the file to our desktop so we can edit it in a second. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, we'll just call this podcast. Uh, save it as an MP3, low quality, smallest file size, and um, so save it to the desktop. So it'll compress the file. If it's a long file, it takes you know a few minutes to do. Um, it merges all the tracks in a one um, in a one layer. We're going with GarageBand for right now. So um, the next thing I do is I open the file in uh, iTunes. So find out what it is. The reason I bring it in iTunes is because um, you can edit the uh, you can edit the metadata and add a photo. Can do a lot uh, with it. Uh, this is basically what Will was showing you. He had a login to talk shoot and all this. Someone's asking about you know the keywords and that sort of thing. Um, I do my church's podcast, so that's why. Uh, So I used to the new iTunes. So here's my file. So I just um, go to view, get info, um, uh, whatever this is. I just, I just know the key command. So and this brings up you know some basic information about the show. And this is where I'm going to title the show, um, add, and add a bunch of like metadata to it, so that will get translated to iTunes and will stay with the file. So. Um, when people are searching for your podcast in iTunes or whatever your um, distribution network is, uh, the name and the title of the episode is the most important. Um, I'm not going to get too much in SEO, but this is one of the most important things about your your show. Is you need to you want to name it what people are going to be searching for. So you might have like some really awesome name for your your show and like some really cool like ordering system like episode X slash you know whatever. Um, but the name is how people are going to find it. So if it's a podcast about fishing, you want to, you know, and you're talking about fly fishing, what are you really specific? Like, you know, fly fishing and tying your hook in whatever other stuff, but really that. Not just like, you know, the great outdoors and, you know, the man and beast show or whatever. It's, you know, that has nothing to do with the content of your show. Um, because if you're trying to find an audience and have them search for you, you want to you want to name your name the episode. What I mean, tags and keywords matter, but nothing matters as as most as the name of the, the track. So, um, if if that's your goal, if if you don't care, if you're just doing it for yourself, then whatever, just name whatever you want. But you know, we're gonna you know, you know audio podcasting. So. Um, and then this is where you get to add your, your information. So you know, I'm an artist, and you know, I usually, if it's a podcast, I usually skip the album. Um, but sometimes I, to get more metadata in there, like I would tag myself as an artist, but then maybe I would put the name of the show as the composer. Um, iTunes wants this information more for how it organizes the iTunes, but this data does go up with your with your episode. So you know, let's just call it PodCamp, Pittsburgh, whatever, and I was thinking here. You can add a track number. Um, th sometimes this is how people will number the show. Uh, usually, I put the number of the show in the title, like at the end, never at the beginning. Um, and then you know you can 
integrated and it is all, all that here. You can add artwork, um, which is this is a uh, very easy to do. And then uh, you can add lyrics, which are, which is also um, can be other data that you want, like show notes or um, other tags or that sort of thing. Um, let me just get through this and I'll, I'll get back. Um, so you could, if you if you wanted a whole transcript of your show, you could put it here and it would stay with the file. Um, and then the rest of these options I don't really uh, worry too much about. Um, when you and then you you save it. It'll add the audio back in there, and then I, and then I you need to drag it back out of iTunes um, because your uh, here's your original file, and then now here's the updated file that we made. We renamed it. We added that metadata. Um, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, I notice almost everybody says, you know, whatever you call this, and this is episode one, episode two. Mm -hmm. Do you have to put episode numbers? Let's say you title of the episode, yeah. and you want to have repeats in the summary. So that you even have to repeat episode one. You see what I mean? Don't yeah. You, it, everyone seems to do it. I just wonder if it's a... I, uh, you absolutely do not have to do that. It's up to your own naming convention, ordering convention. Um, if you were going to repeat an episode, I, unless you were going to add something new to the file, or like you know, have a new intro and say, okay, we're repeating this content, or, or whatever, I would... Um, You'll see when I add that when I add the episode to a post, you don't need to do that. You can just re reuse the same audio link to the same audio file um, in that situation. But is again, there an advantage to saying episode one, episode two, episode three? It just helps people know what's going on. Okay. Um, it helps people see that because there's a date associated with it. They see that you're current. They see that okay, you've got X number of episodes. I mean, it's obvious if they go to your feed and they see all the all the shows right. in there too. Um, it you know. It, it just seems to like just what people do. It's a natural sort of like numbering system, but you can certainly you don't have to do that. It's up to you. Uh, okay. Any other questions at that point? I'm kind of cruising through this. Um, so yeah, so that's saving exploit. It's not like a huge science. It's not like burning DVDs used to be. You can just you know, you know most of the work comes in editing the show. Um, as well. Will mention. Um, so, what I use, I use Libsyn for most of my audio hosting, um, and their local company uh, here in Pittsburgh, they're on Bomb Boulevard in the East End. Uh, I think you know, I think for what you pay for their service uh, to host your files uh, is is good. They also offer stats and other tracking. Now, why would you use a service? Like Libsyn or TalkShoe or anything else, and not just upload your files straight to your website. Does anybody have an idea? Space, yeah, you can fill. You'll fill up your host. Like web hosting, if you're doing this like on the cheap, if it's your hobby um, and you don't have a lot of money, because podcasting get expensive. Uh, you want to use uh, for space and bandwidth, because typically most shared hosting services restrict how much bandwidth you use per month. And if you just have a blog, text space. The download, like the traffic that gets downloaded, you'll never come close to hitting that that ceiling. But if you do have an audio file that's 20 megabytes large, and you have 100 people listening to it every week or every month, you're going to start to eat up the bandwidth that you're you're allotting. So what they what groups like these guys and other services offer is unlimited bandwidth. So they'll they they'll open that open that channel, and so whether people are downloading your podcast through iTunes or Stitcher or however they're getting your file, your audio files are going to live on their servers, and you don't ever have to worry about that. So um, Lipson offers other things. They, ha um, they have like affiliate advertising programs. They have uh, stats. Uh, and just kind of like their, their offering goes up from their basic hosting plans. Um, but you know, if you just want to get started, get the cheapest one and just get in there and start using it. Um, yeah, five dollars per month. It's not that that big of a deal. And how the how they work is, it doesn't matter how much space you use. It's they restrict how much you're allowed to upload per month. So if your show is only twenty megabytes, and you have their basic plan. I think you're allowed a hundred megabytes of upload per month. So you can upload what is that? Three or four shows or five shows per month um, under that plan, 
and then it resets at the beginning of every month. So um, I usually never use that much um, for, for my personal site. Uh, for my church site, we use a little bit more because we're uploading audio files on a regular basis, and that's what makes it a little more. We have more space per month. But, I mean, I think the bump is like $10 a month. So <coughs> the fees aren't that high. If you're, if you're able to monetize, you can kind of cover that cost uh, quickly or by bump. Uh, yeah, you have a question? Oh, sorry. I thought you had your hand up. Um, so, anyways, I'll just log in and show you what this looks like. It's, it's, it's not complicated. Um, I end up putting a lot of like family stuff up here. So when you get into the dashboard, um, you can see you know the stat, the quick stat, start of stats. Um, for me, just you know, just go in, and add a new episode. Um, how Libsyn works is they they create a feed of posts um, in addition to wherever you're going to post it. So if you don't have a website and you just wanted to sh wanted to show that you're going to push to iTunes only, then you could just use Libsyn for that. You wouldn't need Another website, uh, but typically, you know, a show has its own, you know their own website, it, and a podcast feed is just an RSS feed, which is just a blog that you have on your website. You just add that audio file to your post, which I'll show you in a minute. So, um, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you have any questions about using Libsyn, ask me later, and I can certainly um, uh, go in more depth about that. So. I'm just going to find my file here, which I renamed Audio Podcasting One. And it's going to upload it. Their service is pretty fast. And uh, so now this audio file is attached to this post I'm creating. So you know, and you get you know, a description. This is all for if you're going to create a post within the Libsyn system. Uh, so most of the time, I skip this this stuff. Uh, you know, you have all these options, tags, keywords. This stuff again is all for the Libsyn system. Uh, this would matter if you push from Libsyn directly to your iTunes feed. You want to make sure you fill out all this stuff, uh, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to you know, publish this. And then once it's published, I get um, all these URLs. So now this is where my audio file lives on the internet, this URL. So this is where the file is now. So I can use that link to point it to, um, uh, on my blog, to point to that audio file. It'll be connected to my blog post, et cetera. Um, if you wanted to, you know, this is this is the link to the uh, uh, podcast feed that Libsyn creates for me. Uh, it's not the audio file. You know it's the audio file because it, you see the name of it, that MP3. Uh, and then this is just a, um, like an icon that it's embedded somewhere, uh, somewhere else. So then I'm going to put it on my website. Uh, I'm going to create a new post for it. So how many people are, are using WordPress or a self-hosted blogging system? Okay, some of you, or some of you are, some of you who didn't raise your hand are you using a different service or you just don't have anything yet? Don't have anything yet. Is anybody else using a different service? Blogspot. Using Blogspot, okay. So, <coughs> I, use, I use WordPress. I'm gonna show you a plugin for WordPress that will Help with that. Well, um, once you register your um, iTunes, uh, register your podcast with iTunes, that gives you uh, an ID number and allows you to add your file to. Or, or then, I'm sorry, this, this plugin will. I'll just show you. Uh, the plugin is. Um, Blueberry. Uh, it's this is for self-hosted WordPress. Um, so you have to have your blog. Um, not, it's not WordPress.com. Uh, I think WordPress.com has their own tools for adding audio files. Um, but what this plugin does is it, you set up in advance uh, all of your 
information, um, your I, the iTunes um, reference number for your show, and then all of your meta keywords and, and your descriptions and you know, custom images kind of queued up in advance. And then when you publish your post in, in WordPress on your blog, uh, Blueberry will send the show to iTunes. Because what iTunes is, it doesn't, ha it doesn't actually keep your audio file at all. It's just a repository of links to where your audio file lives. That's another reason why you need a service like Libsyn or, or you need to store your audio file somewhere else on the internet. And then all iTunes does is it just gathers the information that you, that you, that you send in and it knows where that audio file lives. So you can, you can send in any audio file link to iTunes and it'll kind of be gathered in your your, uh, your your show feed, but iTunes doesn't store any audio. That's kind of how they get away with, with being a big repository and keeping their cross down. They they rely on you to provide them the information. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. The back end, I might not have this set up very well, but you'll at least be able to see the options. Uh, so you know your your basic settings of you know, what do you want to have happen on your site? Um, it offers a lot of, um, like you can add, you can add content, like let's say you have a show ending or a show beginning um, that you want, you know, look at your, your, your audio. Um, you can have this automatically set up to do that. Like um, if you don't want to edit something in, uh, like let's say you do a little ad, ad segment or, or something, or you just have a little show buffer with some music that you want at the front and you don't want to, edit that in every episode, you can have this kind of queue that up for you. Um, services and stats, Blueberry also has like paid services like to get stats and who's, who listens to it, how many times it was downloaded, was it on a mobile device. There's lots of stat tracking options, they offer their own. Um, how you want your uh, your player to look, is it an audio player, or video player. Uh, and then, you know, here I, here's the iTunes stuff. So I don't have, a, I don't have an iTunes show set up my personal site right now, but this is where you would enter. Like iTunes gives you a, this URL, this example URL, with this ID number at the end, and that's that's how it knows it's coming from you. Um, and then you know, here's all the, the settings that I was talking about. You can set your category, um, all this stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure you can assign some artwork to to it as well, um, in addition to the, the artwork that was put into um, I you know in, in the iTunes audio edit. I, I, yes. So I, so when Libsyn, it gives you the options to add all this stuff, but it's just for their, and you can have, it's just for their, because they basically give you a, a blog feed on their service, but their URL is like, you know, Libsyn.com slash your name slash, you know, and then it's not, you know, your website.com, you know, your, your, the URL for that episode is attached to the Libsyn thing. I don't know if they have a, a, a mechanism for you to use your own URL. Um, I have to check on that. There are some Libsyn people running around. But I usually just use Libsyn to upload the file and that's it. Um, and then and this is where you kind of create your, your, your generic, you're not, I don't want to say generic, your custom information that always gets submitted to iTunes every time, no matter what. So this is where you're going to give your, your description of your whole show. Um, your, your tags for your whole show. Like, this is like the big oh, umbrella place where you add this, and then and then, the, and then Blueberry pushes this information to iTunes. So if you ever need to update it or change it, change it here, and this will push to iTunes, and, and then iTunes will have that updated information. Um, another thing about iTunes is they just released, because of the new iPhone 6s and, and updates to iOS, uh, they, have a, they have updated information about what they're looking for. Um, and Blueberry ha handles some, a lot of this stuff. But, you know, things to notice are, um, here, you know, your cover art. It's looking for a minimum 1400 by 1400 pixel size. You can go up to this higher. If you're doing audio, it's this page gives you the specs for, like, what are the aspect ratios? What's, what's the best way to format your content so that it downloads the fastest and looks the best in Apple devices? Um, Apple does a good job of Give you that information so you know how to, how to push it through. Um, I'll put this link will be in my in the in the post. Uh, 
this link will be on the post too, so you can look at that. And then you just install this through um, your iTunes or your WordPress plugins library. So then, once we've got this all set up, and you don't have, again, you don't have to have a, a, a iTunes a podcast account to use this plugin to just put audio on your site. That's that's basically how I use it on my personal site. Uh, but I, on site they have with the show that I want on iTunes, I have all this filled out. But are you using the, the Blueberry plugin? Is that creating your RSS feed? No. Uh, that WordPress creates the RSS feed. For my blog, for my website, um, that RSS that RSS feed is um, Word, WordPress handles that all of that. Uh, and each blog post will have whatever information I type in here with an audio or video file attached to it, which I'll show you. So WordPress is handling all of the RSS based on my URL, uh, normanhills.com. So that that's that's how it's building now. So WordPress actually, it's like kind of Libsyn will create an RSS feed for you as well, but you're right. not using that. Exactly. You're using whatever WordPress does. Right. right. Okay. So if you don't if you don't have a, a site yet, you could use the Libsyn to, to kind of promote yourself. But um, I you know when if you have a long term plan, get get a website, get your custom URL, and then that way all your content's in one place. You own all your content. It's it's all. Um, you're in control of that, and it, and it has your URL. So when you get into things like searching and, and naming of, of your files and your posts, it's all nice and neat. Um, another thing is like if you if you do use all these free services, keep in mind you don't own the place where your content lives. So unless you and so make make sure you're backing it up and storing it somewhere, and not just leaving it out on a cloud. If you're using Talkshoe's free service. What well, if Tachi goes bankrupt and they're like, we've got to shut it down, you have 10 days to download your content, but you don't get the email until 15 days later, then no your content's gone. So own your stuff is, is another good rule of thumb. You know, make sure you have a backup of it or you're, you're hosting it in places that aren't just going to disappear overnight. Um, so, uh, you know, so here I've created a new post and Blueberry adds this you know, widget down here. So uh, they make it pretty simple. I just grab this. Uh, the direct link to the episode, and I paste it in here. Uh, I don't know why they have this verify button. Like sometimes it doesn't verify, but it's uploaded, it's there, that's the URL, so whatever. Um, you can give some more information here. It usually auto detects it, like it already found that it was 31 seconds. Um, that sort of thing. I, I don't, I don't think that this, this, this information is that, that amazing. And then. Um, Publish this, and now on the front end of my site, here's our file that we just made. It's always awesome news sounds, right? So it's not. I mean, so it's the process isn't that complicated. Um, but yeah, just go through the motions, practice doing that, figure out how all, the, all this stuff works. Uh, next is I want to go back into the, the settings here. So this is my Power Plus settings and audio player. Um, you, they provide you with a, a bunch of options. Of they have some built-in audio players with the plugin. Yeah, sorry. Can I ask a question about like you were just on like sure. where, where you posted it and then like yeah the podcast was that Blueberry like. Integrated into WordPress because I don't see that in my WordPress. I don't have Blueberry. So you need, yeah, are you on, are you self-hosted with WordPress? Yeah. You need to well, dot. You, yeah, I need to start WordPress. Yes, right. Well, which means you have you so yeah you have you have WordPress installed on a web server that you pay for. Um, you need to go to uh, go to your plugins and then. Um, uh, Blueberry is a plugin you install on your WordPress site. So just go in here and add new and search for it. Um, and then that will add that dialogue about the podcast thing. Yeah. Okay. 
So here it is. Here's the plugin. I, you know, I already have it installed, but you can install it through here, and it'll automatically add it. And then when when you have it active, when you have it activated, you'll get this this down here, this extra group of settings, and then that's where you go in and add all that stuff. And then when when this is active, on each post, the post page, it'll have that little widget at the bottom where you can add that audio file. And then when you hit publish, PowerPress automatically adds that audio file to the post. So you can you can choose whether you want the audio file to appear above or below the content. Um, in the settings, you know, there's a lot of options for how it gets displayed, and um, but that that's how that integrates. So, and you don't have to pay for their service. They're going to ask you to pay, like to be a pro member or whatever. To do this, what we're talking about is not is not free. And I've never paid for their service because I don't I don't need their stats and all that extra stuff that they want. I use Google Analytics, um, Libsyn, the basic stats in Libsyn will tell you how many downloads you get. And until you get like advanced and like you need to know like. So you know, you will say you're trying to get advertisers, and you need to know like different segments. Then maybe it's worth it. But just getting started, I would I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, one thing that's a, you know something to be mindful of is the audio player. Uh, I I like the H this HTML5 player. Um, I don't love the way it looks. I think you can customize it if you want to. But uh, you know they still offer I think a flash player, uh, older. Older MP3 players, basic audio players. Uh, I think, yeah, this one um, can play an MP4 file. So, like, they have different players based on what type of content you're using. Uh, personally, I choose the, MP or the HTML5 player because it's going to play on all iOS devices. So, if someone comes to your website just on their uh, in Safari on their on their phone, they're going to be able to hit play, and it's going to play for them. Uh, and then, it all, and then, it, um, then it's going to play in any modern web browser. So I, unless you know your audience is in like older uh, web browsers, like Internet Explorer 8 that doesn't support HTML5, then you might need to use an older audio player that would, would be viewable there. But, you know, we're living in the future, so screw those up. Um, no, I'm kidding. It's really important to know your audience. But, um, so I, but yeah, the HTML5 player is, is, is efficient for that. I like I like the fact that you see the whole bar. I have to use this one. Um, you can research more about different audio players if you need to, uh, or if you have a different type of content or video content. Um, like the, the the video player also um, is important, uh, and you want the video to be if you're doing video, and you're not just going to use YouTube or another video service, and you want your you want to have a video pop your video to go through your podcast feed, which you would add that episode to the same way to either Libsyn or wherever you're hosting your audio file, add it to Blueberry the same way. Um, an audio file versus a, a video file in the context of a podcast, there's not a difference. It's just a, a, a media file attached to a blog post that's an RSS feed. That's what it boils down to. So you're just attaching this media file to your, your, your blog post. Um, and then they just slap the little podcast on top of it, so it sounds different than from what it, when you're just basically just doing that. Um, but do your research on your audio player too. If you're just going to do a couple of videos, I, I might recommend just having a YouTube account and using YouTube to embed uh, right in, in WordPress. Uh, with WordPress, they have really sophisticated uh, backend tools. You can just paste your YouTube URL right in the body of your blog post, and it'll grab the YouTube video. You need a special size um, or whatever you can customize that on you know on YouTube and play it. What one of the things that's good about that is you know the WordPress and YouTube kind of handle the um, the back end stuff about what device is being looked at on and how's this gonna play and the orientation and all that stuff. So that that can be something to consider. But if you're straight up doing doing video all the time, you know, get, you know we'll get we can talk about that offline. Uh, any questions? Okay, so yeah, that actually pretty much covers everything I have. I, uh, we have some time. Um, did I? Uh, did we not cover anything that anybody has like some other questions about? What, what about copyrights? 
Yeah. Sure. You said putting music behind your What if somebody claims that is their copyright? Yeah. Well, if someone claims that, hopefully you can work that agreement out with them. Um, like all copyright, it's the same as when you were in high school with plagiarism or other text or whatever. You know, if if it's music that someone else made that doesn't have um, specific free rights to you, then then you need permission to use their content. Uh, the iTunes library, um, they give that away. They're like that's safe. That's any any of those Apple sounds in there are totally safe and free to use by anyone. That's how you. Hear, I hear them in TV commercials all the time. Like. I am like I'm watching football on Sunday, and then there's some sound effect from iTunes. I'm like, what the heck? Like, this company did like pay for someone to make their own custom sound. Like, how cheap is that? But like, you know, what it's there, fine. You know, you can, you know, so so the the quality of those sound effects are there. Um, there's more than just sound effects. There's, there's there's a lot of stuff in there. There are sites out there that have free sounds, or you can pay to join a sound library. Uh, you know, just just make sure that the the licensing is free. It, there's a lot of resources out there. Yeah. I use pond5.com. Pond5? Pond, like a lake. Pond5. Pond5.com. Five. Five. You can buy, you can spend $5 or $50 for sound effects, music, video. It's, it's incredible. There's, um, I forget off the top of my head where it was. I used to use this. Uh, there was a site that allowed me to go in and get pop like pop music. It was it was a it was a service that basically was a repository for new music coming out and they wanted to give they give it away to like T V stations and radio stations to like preview it or use it um, so they could eventually sell the album and promote the artist. So they had a podcaster level there where I could go in and as long as I added the correct credits to my post, I could use like anything that they made available um, in my show. So I would go get background music, you know, just full, full songs, you know, just all, all kinds of random stuff. I even found a lot of music I ended up liking and listening to. So you can, you can, um, if you're interested in that, I'll have to dig it up. I forget what it is. I haven't used it in a while. Um, but yeah, that's, so yeah, do you mind for that? Yeah. Yeah, well, you can use Google Hangouts and then get the audio later. Just pull the audio out. Yeah. Um, that's that's one thing people do. Skype, uh, if you have the, I think the pro version of Skype, allows you to record the call. There are other conference type um, online tools out there. Uh, I, There's a person out of the information I think it's on Java. Yeah, there, there, there are programs you can download and then run it. Like, so you would have a Google Hangout or whatever audio chat you're doing, and then you're just recording system audio. Um, that's, I think, what SoundCloud does. And then you reply whatever microphone they have with. And sure, yeah, whether they're calling in or using a computer. Um, if it's a regular guest, like, I would try to have them, like, get a, a decent setup. You know, you can work through that. I worked on shows where um, one person was, I think, I think they recorded it on TalkShoe because they had, like, a bunch of people all over the country. But they were all regular, but the one woman, she just would only have her cell phone, and that was all she had to call in, and sometimes the call would drop. And it was like an hour-long show or more that these guys did. And, um, you know, those are limitations, and that's the reality. But, you know, it's not as bad as it sounds, honestly. Uh, if you're creating content that people are interested and want to listen to and engage with, it's okay. And, you know, you can always step it up as you go. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, unless you really have, like, resources behind you, I wouldn't like shoot with the biggest, most expensive equipment um, until I know like what I want, what I use. Um, you know, try to borrow people's equipment or, or you know, go and check it out or go buy it at the store, use it if you figure out if you like it or not and then return it within 15 days or whatever. You know, like, you know, you just figure out what, you, what, what stuff you like because, you know, it is an investment and it's not only your time, but, you know, it's a lot of money to get, to get started. Yeah. You had commented earlier that podcasting is expensive. Mm -hmm. Where where are the costs? And like in the equipment, you know, if you need a soundboard or multiple microphones and headphones, like you can get really, you can get really detailed. Sorry if I call it this. Uh, hosting fees can get expensive. Um, 
are you promoting it? Are you buying ads? Like, what are your goals? Uh, the, I mean, how, you know, your web, your web service fees can, can get expensive. If you need to hire a developer or, you know, something like that. Um, you know, the, the tools and resources are out there that you can do it yourself. And that's what PodCamp is all about, is like helping you guys make those connections. So, um, but yeah, that's that's the, that's where, where it is. Uh, are there any free alternatives to the same? Because I'm running over that 15 minutes, and the next level is 15 dollars a month. So I've already uh, signed up for mine and it's not that expensive. You could use, I mean, you could use Google Drive. I've heard of people doing that. Um, right or now, I'm Dropbox, but I don't want to do that. You want to stay there? I don't. Know, I mean, I don't think that's the best way to do it. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to research. I'd have to look it up. Um, I'd have to research, but. I don't know that you're gonna find a cheaper one than that. Uh, you know, it kind of is what it is. So maybe you can find someone to help you, like a sponsor to help you offset that cost or something. Just, just you know, that part of it, uh, or ask your listeners to to, to put a couple bucks if, if you. Yeah, it goes from fifty to two fifty, which I think is a huge jump of rates. Yeah. I don't need yeah. like eight of them. But right, right. Yeah. yeah. Who wants to share? Why you get two accounts? You could, yeah, you could do get two accounts, right? <laughs> but I think it's like fifteen dollars is the next level, right? It's fifteen. Yeah. But I, I initially thought I was just getting like two hundred bucks on equipment, but I that went up like that. Six hundred on equipment. Yeah. Are you hearing that? Like, so yeah. here's where it's going. Yeah. 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 Like, I thought that I don't know anything about this. Stuff, so I bought four headset. Make sure you can, you know, so I had to get, I wanted, I'm doing a talk show today for like the Google Press, so I needed to announce it tomorrow, so yeah, it's, it went from 130 to $600. Yeah. Did you, did you say that Entry and Exit, you can record once, and like, you know, that, you know, touch once on, like, the theme song, and like, the beginning Yeah, I do have the same. You could, you could, those are options to add audio clips at the beginning and end of your episode within but then you could have a shorter show. Yeah. Do yeah, you know what the default is? So I think I can play that. Well, it's it's well, whatever you record at is fine. It's just when you can press it, press it down. You want it, you want to get that file down. So, um, I'm not, I mean, unless you're doing music, I don't know. I mean, I don't know exactly what you're doing. It's mostly just voice. You don't need. You don't need that range of that. It's just it'll it'll be fine. It's the quality is fine. The quality is fine. Um, it's fine. Oh, so yeah, if you plan on using just your computer, you probably want a microphone that has a USB interface. Um, otherwise, you're going to need a soundboard and to mix it together and then go into your computer. Alright, well, we're at 1250. I don't know what's next. Is lunch? Lunch. Uh, Alright, yeah. Feel free to pay me. Um, again, yeah, here's the norm. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to answer any questions or have any conversations about anything that's on your mind this weekend. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the time. If anyone is going out for lunch,